Islamic science began to flourish roughly two centuries after Islam was founded in the early 7th century. The years of rapid expansion were over then, and the immense size of the Arab Empire demanded for a lot of knowledge in various realms. The Abbasid dynasty, which had taken over the Caliphate in the year 750, noticed this need and fostered the translation of scientific texts of ancient Greeks. After a smaller pre-stage under Caliph Harun al-Rashid, his son Caliph al-Mahmud built an academy for science in 813. This house of wisdom attracted scholars of many countries and of different faiths. Later on, the dynasty of the Umayyads that rivaled the Abbasids made Cordoba, today in Spain, the second century of Islamic science. Islamic astronomy started with the translation of Greek, Indian and Persian texts. Scientists found the geocentric system of Ptolemy to be the most sophisticated model of the universe. Ptolemy, or Claudius Ptolemaeus, was a Greek scientist of the 2nd century. His major work, the Almagest, is regarded as the height of ancient astronomy. The oldest existing version of the Almagest is a Latin translation of the Arabic translation of the Greek original. The name itself is the Latinized Arabic name of the book, which I probably cannot pronounce. In Ptolemy's system, the spherical shape of the Earth was acknowledged. The Earth was regarded as the center of the universe. It did not move. The moon, the sun, the planets and the stars were revolving in eight circular spheres around the Earth. The closest of these spheres was the one of the moon. The sphere of the stars was the most distant. Classical Islamic astronomers improved the system of Ptolemy a lot. Central questions were how to calculate the motion of planets, the moon and the sun. The Islamic scientists improved the mathematics involved and provided calculations unmatched for centuries. But during all the centuries, when Islamic astronomy heeded this science, it adhered to a geocentric world model. Some of the most important Islamic astronomers were Okay, I give it a try. Al Khwarizmi. He calculated tables for the movement of the sun, the moon, and the five planets known at the time. Those were published in 830. For this, he used mathematics that were unknown to the Arabs before. In 825, he wrote a book called On the Calculation with Hindu Numerals that brought the Indian numeral system to the Middle East. In the 12th century, his book was translated to Latin, at that time the language of science in the Christian countries, and led to the use of so-called Arabic numerals in the West. The word algorithm, or algorithmi in Latin, is derived from the name al quarizimi The word algebra is derived from a method for solving equations that is presented by al quarizimi Alfagani was a famous astronomer of the 9th century. He wrote the elements of astronomy in 833. This book was a summary and review of Ptolemy's Almagest. Alfagani pointed out some flaws in Ptolemy's theory. Elements of Astronomy was one of the most popular books on this topic until the 15th century in the Islamic part of the world and after its translation to Latin also in Christian Europe. Albertani wrote about the timing of the new moons and eclipses. He calculated the solar year with an error of just one minute. He probably was the first to calculate sine, cosine and tangents. Albertani is quoted a lot of times by Nicolaus Copernicus in his book about the heliocentric world model. Ar-Rahman al-Sufi worked on stellar maps including constellations, star positions, magnitudes and their color. His maps were used for centuries. Alberuni discussed the idea that the Earth rotated around its own axis. He discovered mathematical techniques to determine exactly the beginnings of the seasons and invented some astronomical in instruments. Alberuni discovered seven different ways of finding the direction of the north and south and developed methods to determine the direction of Mecca 
from any point of the globe. This golden age of Islamic science was driven by the need for knowledge that derived when the Muslims conquered an empire that stretched from Spain to the Indian borders. But this video is about the connections of this 300 years boom and the religious foundations of the Islamic society. There are three points to mention. Firstly, several verses of the Quran were understood as an encouragement for doing science. Al-Biruni cites in his book Geodesy some of them when he argues against the followers of traditional thought. Such as remember Allah standing, sitting and reclining, and consider the creation of the heavens and the earth, and say, Our Lord, thou createdst not this in vain. Say unto them, O Muhammad, are those who know equal with those who don't know? But only men of understanding will pay heed. Who hear advice and follow the best thereof, such are those whom Allah guideth, and such are the men of understanding. And hath made of service unto you whatsoever is in the heavens, and whatsoever is in the earth. It is all from him. Lo, herein verily are portents for a people who reflect. Although I find it disputable, if the knowledge referred to in these verses is scientific knowledge, scientists like Al-Biruni understood it this way. It was a justification and an encouragement for their inquiry. A lot of sayings of Muhammad add to these verses. I had some difficulties to find them in the Hadith. Because of this, I am not sure if all of them are authentic. The Hadith, by the way, are the collected actions and sayings of Muhammad and were written down about 200 years after Muhammad's death. Go in quest of knowledge even unto China. Seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. The ink of the scholar is more holy than the blood of the matter. The acquisition of knowledge is a duty incumbent on every Muslim, male and female. So the scientists of the Golden Age could feel in line with the Islamic teachings of that time. A second aspect of the relation of Quran and science is that they were regarded as independent realms. The astronomer and mathematician Al-Biruni also was a philosopher and historian. He studied the science and the religion of India and compared the Indian and the Muslim approach. He came to the following conclusion. This citation is taken from the Encyclopedia of the Quran. The views of the Indian astrologers I assume that Biruni mentions astrologers here because astrology and astronomy were not separated at the time. The views of Indian astrologers have developed in a way which is different from those of our Muslim fellows. This is because, unlike the scriptures revealed before it, the Quran does not articulate on the subject of astronomy or any other field of necessary knowledge any assertion that would require erratic interpretations in order to harmonize it with that which is known by necessity. The Quran, adds Al-Biruni, does not speak of matters which are subject of hopeless differences, such as history. In contrast, all the religious and transmitted books of the Indians do indeed speak of the configuration of the universe in a way which contradicts the truth which is known to their own astrologers. Driven, however, by the need to uphold the religious traditions, Indian astrologers pretend to believe in the astrological doctrines of these books even when they are aware of their falsity. With the passage of time, accurate astronomical doctrines were mixed with those advanced in the religious books, leading to the confusion one encounters in Indian astronomy. The encyclopedia concludes, In Al-Biruni's view, the Quran does not interfere in the business of science, nor does it infringe on the realm of science. So, the Quranic teachings of that time encourage scientific inquiry and the separation of science and religion allowed for the unburdened development of new ideas and theories. There is a third connection between the Quran and science. 
This one is quite unexpected. Islamic prayers have to be done at fixed times and they, ha and they have to be done towards Mecca. Thus, Islamic scientists looked for ways to determine the direction of Mecca from remote places on the spherical Earth and to calculate the exact time from the movement of celestial bodies. This explains the Islamic interest in astronomy and led to the development of spherical geometry, for example.